All right, joining us here on Real Agriculture now at uh, the Ag Excellence Conference in Regina, we have Steve Denise of Pride Seeds and farmer from Southern Ontario. And Steve, today you were part of a debate talking about social, li social license. Are Canadian farmers losing their, uh, their social license? And you took the side of yes, partly because of your background with the, the neonic issue in Ontario. Yeah, and, and going beyond the neonics. So if, if you define social license as kind of is the ability of farmers to to be able to to act with with um, within a reasonable amount of regulations and being able to act with a, with a reasonable amount of freedom, I took the stand that in fact as we look forward, we're probably going to be facing more regulations and more restrictions, and and in many ways because of the the political landscape and the way it's changing and the influence that. Uh, non-government organizations are having on policy that we're actually losing our social license to farm. So that's the side that I took. So what are the, the costs from that? There's a lot of costs if we look at it as a society in terms of, of uh, farmers losing the social license to farm or being uh, overly restricted by the government in terms of what they do or consumer preferences without having full information in terms of what the implications are of their choices. Uh, so some of the costs are, you know, we're, we're going to see food costs go up. That's probably the one discussion we haven't had nationally. So we've had lots of discussion in terms of whole foods and organic foods and everything else. But one of the discussions we haven't had is what is the cost going to be for our food supply? We've enjoyed in North America uh, the lowest cost food supply in the history of mankind, meaning 10% of our, of our income. And as we go forward, if, if some of the regulations come into effect and, and if our, our capacity to produce goes down, you know, we're looking at an increase in our food costs. That's just an, an outcome and a reality of what we're going to see. I think part of that then becomes what's the impact that has, and particularly on lower income families, and their ability to buy a full diet, you know, fruits and vegetables and meats and everything else, and we're going to see uh, implications in terms of, of, of what that means for low income families. Uh, we're also seeing, I think, implications in terms of the environment and, and some of the call to move away from some of the modern crop production products that we're using have had those products and, and the reason we adopted them in farmers wasn't only economic, it was because of the benefit we had to our environmental stewardship. And so as we look forward, if we lose some of the tools that we've got today and the movement is toward losing some of those tools, then in fact it's going to have a negative impact on the environment. Even the number of farms, or, or you could see some consolidation? Yeah, and it's, it's one of the things I think, uh, it's, it's interesting, the irony in this is that, that what consumers are saying is they trust farmers, and, and they trust uh, what would be considered the traditional family farm. But as we see regulations going up in all areas of agriculture, not only in terms of pesticide use, but worker safety, and, and those things are all good, don't get me wrong, but the cost to, to, to comply and to meet the regulations that are being put into effect is actually accelerating the consolidation of agriculture. And we still have, may, may have family-owned farms, but in fact we're becoming more industrialized in terms of the type of farm we have. And that's a, that is very ironic because that's not the type of farm that the average consumer wants to see. So is this a, a losing battle? No, I think there's, a, there's a, the battle in terms of the social license, how do we regain it. I think the battle in terms of uh, the tools that we'll have to, to produce the food supply going forward, there's a couple things in our favor. First of all, if we look at the global population going forward and how it's going to increase, and we know that the global population is going to increase, political stability comes from having a, a stable food supply. And so we have to, as an industry, be able to increase our productivity to meet the demands of, of the, uh, the food supply or the food demand globally. So that's the first thing. The second thing I think as farmers, one of the reasons we've, we've fallen behind in terms of this whole idea of the social license to farm is because we've been so focused on, on produ our product, production capacity and our environmental stewardship and everything else that we've been totally production focused and what we haven't done is a good job of communicating the benefits of what we're doing. And so what we need to do is, is amalgamate our efforts across the country, put resources to it and actually spend time talking to consumers about why we do what we do how we produce food today, the benefits of that, and the implications if we have to move away from those tools in terms of the, not only the, the safety of their food supply, but also the environmental stewardship that, that would compromise, and also the cost of food, most importantly for them. So does that mean going beyond the feeding 9 billion by 2050, that, that message that we, that's really been hammered home over the last few years? Well, as we had the discussion this afternoon, I mean, going that is still a, an integral message, but consumers in North America, because we've, we've, you know, if you look at the generational changes, we've become, some of the younger generations are looking at quality of life, they're looking at, uh, at, uh, at me, right? Me as opposed to the, to the global essence of society. And so what we have to do is also address the concerns that, that people in North America have in order to maintain the tools that we will have to have to feed the whole globe. 
and that is, is that we are producing a safe, a safe food supply. That it doesn't matter if you're looking at organic food or conventionally produced food or, or food that's, that's, that's using any aspect of technology, including biotechnology, the food supply is equally as safe across the board. In fact, there's benefits to it when we look at some of the technologies that we're using. And that's the area where we, as, as farmers and as, as members in the agriculture industry, we have to be confident in taking that message out to consumers. And I think that's what a lot of farmers uh, would appreciate uh, um, help with is how do I get the confidence to talk about what I'm doing so that I can talk to my neighbors, I can talk to people you know, at uh, community organizations that, that are not within agriculture so that we can get the message out about the safety and the, and the importance of what we're doing as, as farmers today. Ag is, of course, diverse. Do we all have to be on the same page to, to, make, to make, this, uh, make that effort? Um, no, I don't think we necessarily all have to be on the same page. I think what we have to be on the same page about is the safety of the technologies that we're using. And that goes whether we're in organic production or whether we're in conventional production. And I think there has to be an acknowledgement that as consumers have the right, and the right in North America because we consumers have the disposable income to do it, is that they have the right to choose the food supply that, that they, they feel they, they want. But that should not be based on any misperceptions in terms of food safety, in terms of nutrition or anything else. So our job as, as agriculture is, look, there are different sources of food out there, but at the end of the day, if you're looking for a balanced, uh, and safe and nutritional food supply for your family and for your household, that, uh, that across all aspects of the industry, we're providing that today. Okay.